well, guess what? Self-care is self-love. But if I couldn't think of it as self-love. So initially it was like, I'm just going to focus on self-care. Mm -hmm. And even when you do things for other people, that, that will help you feel better about yourself. So doing those little things will help to build on that self-confidence. And all of a sudden, as I really began to get well and heal, um, I felt whole. There's no cure. And guess what? I wouldn't want to really be cured. I wouldn't want to forget everything I went through now that I've actually come through it because now I have that compassion for other people going through it. There are times I actually feel so strong that I'm like, I sort of forget what it was like. And I have to step back and remind myself, oh wait, no, I remember what that's like. And I don't wanna really forget it because it's not like I wanna live in the past, but I wanna be able to, to just go back and touch it so that when I'm helping other people, I know where they've been. No, definitely. Like you say, you can really uh, go back and, and envision the, these hard times that you've been through so um, you, you can give them the best support. Um, regarding um, the self-care, um, I know you said helping other people is one thing that, that was really uh, beneficial for you. Um, would you have any other self-care tips that work for you on your journey or or any, any tips that people could do if they're dealing, like you say, obviously everyone's trauma is different, but the physical symptoms and the emotional symptoms that we go through are what people can relate to. So would there be any things that you could say off the top of your head that, that worked for you uh, in that time that you could share with the followers? So I'm a pretty anxious person and I have a daughter who's also pretty anxious. Um, for us, both of us, exercise is key. Just moving your body just makes such a difference. Exercise is one of the few things that actually affects all of the neurotransmitters um, in your body. So dopamine, serotonin, and endorphins. It's, it's all of the feel good stuff in your body. Helps to balance it. It's gone head to head with Prozac in several studies. Um, so I really, really encourage you even during lockdown times. So my husband drives everyone in the house insane because he does all of his meetings walking up and down the hallway. <laughs> so he just, you know, it's like he's gonna get those steps in no matter what. It was, it was pouring rain yesterday, so he couldn't go outside. So he just, he walks around the house. Um, so just find some way to move your body. So while I'm watching TV with the kids, we're watching a movie, like I'll sit down and stretch on the floor and just start moving around. It just, it helps so much. For me, meditation is huge. So I think of prayer, like um, talking to God, getting all of the chatter out of my head and meditation like listening. So when I can quiet, I finally get all the chatter out and I can finally listen. So breathing exercises are super helpful. Um, there's never been a time where it's been more important to focus on your diet, um, to really eat healthy food, whole food, just because keeping your immunity strong is what's going to protect you from this crazy virus. So that's gonna protect you more than anything else. So those are a few of the things for me. And the number one thing is turning off the news. I, I cannot listen to the news. Yeah. I'm, I'm affected more than probably most people, but I'm highly affected by negative um, negativity on the news. And I take anything off of my social media that is just gratuitous negativity. I just remove it. I just don't, I don't allow that to be on there. No, um, well, again, that goes to how, how, would, you, um, how would you feel if, you, if your daughter or, or son uh, we're seeing um, so much negativity. What you do, you'd remove it away from them. So why wouldn't you do that to yourself? So that, right. that's really good information. Uh, and why you say uh, the news, obviously they just fuel, uh, the whole fuel is uh, to keep everyone in their fearful state so they can watch. Uh, and for people who are dealing with uh, mental illness um, or deal with anxiety, depression or anything they've gone through, that's really not, why you say, not really a channel that, that we should really dive into too much. No, and I mean, especially some of the, well, you're not here, but the political stuff that we've got, it's just so toxic. Oh. Um, it's, you know, you're gonna figure out what's going on in the world, find somewhere else. I mean, I know a lot of people who actually go to BBC for our news because they're just like, I just wanna hear what's happening without all of the, you know, the nonsense. Oh. So they just, they don't wanna hear it. Um, so, you know, it's, we're just trying to get them, grab the headlines, don't listen to the rest. What would your advice be on, um, I get asked a lot about um, like uh, supplements. Would you say that you have any favorite supplements of work for yourself? Um, yep. And obviously any studies that you guys have done on it as well. 
So we've actually done, we've, you can actually go to our website. There's lots of studies that we publish around supplements. There's a ton of, if you just look it up, there's tons of studies on supplements. That's why when doctors say, oh, there's no research behind it. I'm like, really? Do they read? It's kind of annoying. But um, there's a lot of research around supplements. So my five go-tos have always been a, a good multivitamin. So we call it minding the gap, which will make sense to you. Um, so no one does it perfectly, right? We don't eat perfectly. We don't get enough sleep usually. We don't live in an environment. We, there's environmental toxins all around us. So it helps us to mind the gap for those things that are affecting us, uh -huh. right? So just where we're not getting it perfectly. Um, then there's fish oil. Fish oil is super important, especially for anxiety and depression, for your brain health, but also for other parts of your body. Then there's a probiotic. If your gut's not right, your mood and your memory are not going to be good. Your brain health is not going to be good. Your mental health will suffer. Um, then vitamin D, especially right now. So during this crazy time, vitamin D, they're finding that the worst cases of COVID, most of those people have low vitamin D. Yeah. So that's really important. Um, then after that, we often tell people to get tested individually. So just like with your brain health, we want to custom design most nutritional programs to the individual. Um, so for me, I mean, I actually really like taking like digestive enzymes, um, but I also take something for my eyes. Um, I take curcumin, so anti-inflammatory, um, you know, supplements and also saffron. Saffron has been also shown to be really good for depression, which I'm not depressed, but during this time being inside, I'm like, you know, I think I'm just going to take a little pick me up. So saffron's really good. I always put saffron in my tea as well. Well, that's really interesting. And um, obviously um, some of the followers um, may be on uh, anxiety or depression medication. Can they look into things like um, um, herbal remedies and, and um, the, the healthy holistic side? Um, or, or would you say that's something they need to speak to uh, with the doctor first before they dive in? They can 100% look into getting off of those medications. However, don't do what I did. I actually write about that in my book. I took myself off of it cold turkey because the doctor wouldn't listen to me. Okay. Don't do that. If your doctor's not listening to you, just remember your doctor is not your mommy, they're not your daddy, and they're not your boss. They are your partner in health. And if you don't have a doctor that is your partner in health, find a new doctor. Yeah. Like, I'm just going to say it as bluntly as I can. Um, as someone in the medical field, as someone who's married to a doctor, we both agree on this. You need to find a doctor who's your partner. Usually, um, doctors who are most open to helping you with natural ways to heal are functional medicine doctors. So we are huge. We, we practice functional psychiatry. Yeah. So functional medicine is not, it's not, um, even though we have naturopaths that work for us and we're fans of natural, you know, naturopaths as well. Functional medicine is that sort of like bridge in between. We're right. not anti-medicine at all. We're just against the indiscriminate use of it. There are some people who need medications. Look, if, there, if I get meningitis, I want an antibiotic, okay? Medications save lives, but we don't want to indiscriminately use them. And we wanna be able to do things naturally when possible. So a functional medicine doctor is that person and they believe in getting to the root causes. So they wanna know why, why are you depressed? Depression should not be a diagnosis, it should, it's a symptom, right? So depression is a symptom of what's going on in your body and mm. yet we consider it a diagnosis so what is going on that's making you depressed is it the medications you're taking did you have a head injury are your hormones out of balance like again you know we, why are you why are you anxious why are you suffering like we want to know what's happening that's causing it and get to that root cause otherwise you're just putting band-aids over bullet holes no that's really 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 powerful because i don't think a lot of people um even in, even in the um, the medical uh, industry, actually um, can see it when you say it when you put it that way. It's so obvious, isn't it? That the anxiety is isn't the root cause. That there's something behind that. Um, so I think that's really powerful. Um, and yeah, I, I, I know you get you get yeah. I just want to add one thing because I, I I see some of the comments. I just want to say one thing before we move on to the next point. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, of course. Please don't feel bad if you're taking medication. That's another big issue I see. There are people who feel defective because they take medication. If your medication is working for you, if your life is better because you've been taking this medication, if you're more stable, if you've got bipolar, you've got schizophrenia, whatever, your life is better now that you are on medication, you might want to lose the thought that you need to get off of it at all costs because 
that actually can cause more damage. If you're happier, better, your life is stable, you're not defective. Okay, take, I, I, take, I have to take thyroid medication for the rest of my life because mm -hmm. I had thyroid cancer. I'm not defective. It's just my life is better because this medication exists. I just don't want to take medications I don't need. So I, I want to make sure that people listening as I'm looking at some of these comments don't feel defective if there's a medication they do need to take. Yeah, and no, then, as long as it's making their life better. Definitely. Like you say, so if someone's on an SSRI, for example, and it's working for them, then yes. they're, they're not having panic attacks and they feel that um, they're, they're in a much better, healthier place, being on something like that may be really beneficial for them because obviously we know um, that the side effects on, on the newer drugs uh, tend to be uh, less for some people so i think yeah have, there should be no shame in whatever route that you decide to take to improve your life improve your mental uh, wellness but what you're saying is that you've done the studies um on on this uh, this gap between um medication and, and the holistic side and you guys have seen great results so i think that's really really we interesting. see great results with many people some people need meds yeah, but we um, want to make sure they're on the right meds. <laughs> no, definitely. For them. <laughs> and if, if, if just to, to wrap everything up, for firstly, again, thank you for spending time with us and sharing your story. And um, where can everyone go and support yourself? Where, where can they grab the book? Uh, what date is it on again? Um, and obviously, on the website, if people want to look uh, more into uh, everything that you guys do, where, where can they head off to? So the websites are um, amenclinics.com, so A-M-E-N, like the end of a prayer, clinics.com, mm -hmm. um, or my website as well, tannaamen.com. The book it comes out January 5th, so thank you so much for saying that, The Relentless Courage of a Scared Child. And um, that comes out January 5th. You can actually pre-order it at relentlesscourage.com, and I have lots of fun gifts um, for anybody who does pre-order to help you sort of rewrite your story which is a cool exercise to do for anybody. And um, you can follow me at, at Tana Amen. That's wonderful. And while I do, Tana, I'll, um, I'll do a swipe up to, to, the, to the clinic and um, to the book. You guys will have to let me know when, when it's out and people can, can grab it on the day. And um, we'll definitely um, get some hype up around it because I, I just want to say on a personal note, it's just been fantastic speaking to yourself and your husband like I said, I love everything that you guys are doing. And even my close uh, friends that I speak to, just I'm, I'm guessing you've heard it so many times, they just say how well that you guys uh, speak to the wider audience and how people can really relate to your stories. Thank you so much. And it's, it's always such a pleasure. And if I could just say one thing before we close, you know, you don't go to a movie. Um, how many of you ever have gone to a movie where nothing bad happens? you wouldn't go. There's no drama in the movie. You don't go to the movie, right? You always want to see the drama and the resolution because that's what makes it a good movie. So I like to think of our lives as being better because of the broken pieces that we've had. My favorite form of art is Kintsugi. It's a Japanese art form of broken pottery where they mend it with gold or platinum. And the Japanese um, that are involved in this, this type of art, they believe that the pottery is more special because it's bro been broken and mended, that it's because of those broken pieces, um, that that pottery is now valuable because every break tells a story. So regardless of what you've been through, you're more interesting because of it. So your life is more special because of it. So every one of those broken pieces tells a story. Yeah, like well, you say, every, every one of those pieces, experiences make you who you are today, isn't it? And like you say, you can share share what you've been through, share them experiences and help other people. Um, and obviously be able to relate to other people which is so important on everyone's mental health journey absolutely no that's <laughs> one yeah so again tana thank you very much for taking the time out um and just yeah just stay in contact when when all this is over it'd be lovely to come over and show the guys everything that you guys do oh absolutely um, we would love to have you yeah, so um, let's just pray really for a positive 2021 uh, and um, yeah, just continue what, what you guys are doing and um, DLC, the whole community will always be uh, supporting everything you guys are doing.
yeah, let's let's pray it changes next year. But yes, we would love to have you come. And it's, it's just, I'm so happy that I connected with you.